Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, I'm going to take you kind of behind the scenes on the Colby Heist interview I did a couple weeks back and show you some tips and tricks for uh, what I did to get through that edit because I made some mistakes when I was filming it. Right off the start, you can see that in this camera angle, I'm totally blurry and that's entirely my fault because I set the camera to focus on him and then I set way too close to the camera on the couch. So he's in focus the entire shoot but I don't have a good camera angle for myself and the close-up camera angle that I had for him uh, was unusable because when I sat down and leaned forward on the couch to address the camera he started to move closer and then that camera angle was not useful anymore it wasn't framed right and basically half of his head was cut off so I needed a way to get through the edit without staying on one camera angle the entire time and also just keep it interesting. So let's start with the general philosophy for editing a video interview. Well, one like this, where it's just conversational. I'm asking him a question. You can see us both, and we're having a conversation. So in this type of interview, what I wanted to do was have a close-up when he's answering and have a wide for when I'm asking a question. Or, or whenever I'm speaking, you can see me whenever it's him talking you see either the wide angle or a close-up. So I did a rough cut just looking at the main camera angle and I edited based on the dialogue. So it's really important to edit your video based on what is being said. Primarily, you want to follow the voice in this sort of edit. So I got my rough cut done the same way that I've shown you in other videos. Then I went through and started deciding where I should cut to my second angle. But before I could cut to the second angle, I need to figure out how I can make a second angle. And I did that using a video processor preset. You can get this preset in the Reaper blog subscribers download. Basically, this zooms in a little bit and it pans over to Colby. Um, and I used bypass automation for the plugin. So I'm just automating one parameter instead of three to go in between those cuts. So the first cut here is me talking to Colby, and then when I ask a question, it goes in tight. This plugin becomes active and begins his answer, and it comes back to me, and I'm talking again. There are some other edits where I'm not changing a camera angle for each edit. You kind of have to use your discretion for how often you're changing the camera angle or why you're changing the camera angle, or why you need to cut there at all. But probably it, was, it wasn't the flow that we wanted for that part of the conversation. So um, little edits like this. The best thing you can do is just go like frame by frame. And again, I was mostly going by the timing of the dialogue, um, not always going for like the absolute best visual edit, and then letting the audio suffer. So that was the trick for doing the two camera angles and also that rule of thumb for when to cut to it. So in a longer thing, I think right here, he's talking the whole time and I think I changed camera angles just because I wanted to, to change it up a little bit uh, every 20 to 30 seconds. You don't want to stay on one camera angle too long. And if you need to stay on a camera angle longer or also if you need to hide a couple edits Cutting to B-roll is a good way of doing it. So B-roll is just other footage, like this is this album cover, and I've got some automation on it to scroll through. Let me show you that. It's really simple. This is an, an image file dropped in. I have the, um, again, it's the same preset that uh, comes in my downloads bundle, and I'm just automating the size and the position of it. Let's see. Starts at the bottom, scrolls up to the top, and then cuts back to Colby. Also did color correction, sort of. Color adjustments. Just to make it a little warmer color. It's a little bit greenish here. I'm a little bit kind of white, I guess you could say. We had a warm colored light. Uh, over the background, um, but there was like a, a daylight bulb in front of us. So 
this kind of warms it up a little bit, makes it a little nicer looking. There's, yeah, there's some more B-roll footage. I did that same trick for panning and zooming for the different uh, image clips that I had for the game. And that just makes it a little more visually interesting rather than staying on a static image um, the entire shot. I think that's about all there is to say on this project. I'll definitely like to do a video production course at some point to explain this stuff in more detail and you know take you through step by step on how you could do this sort of thing in Reaper. But for now, that's all I've got. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support on Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Bye.